low-budget program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Los Angeles Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. Warning in connection with safe robberies. One Pete Galitzen, thought to be driving a stripped-down Ford Roadster, is in company with two other boys. Described as follows. Short, stocky, approximately 15 years old. This boy is slippery. If found, arrest and hold. That's all. Rolls and quit. If you are one of those many motorists who feel that one gasoline is about as good as another, how do you account for the fact that more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment use Rio Grande cracked gasoline than any other? Just what is cracked gasoline, Mr. Lindsley? Cracked gasoline is just what the name indicates, a cracked gasoline. You know coffee is cracked, that is ground, before you can get the full good out of it. Wheat grains are cracked and re-cracked, and the chaff is thrown away before a fine grade of flour can be obtained. So it is with Rio Grande cracked gasoline. In Rio Grande's great modern refinery, gasoline is literally cracked by terrific heat and pressure into millions, yes, billions of tiny parts. Non-usable units are drawn off and discarded entirely. The remaining gasoline atoms are pure energy atoms, ready to flash into driving power at the very first spark. I see. That sounds convincing. It is convincing, Matt. So convincing that Los Angeles, Oakland, Berkeley, Fresno, Santa Barbara, San Diego, Maricopa County, Arizona, and many, many other cities and counties throughout this territory have specified Rio Grande cracked gasoline month after month in preference to any other brand. Thousands of new motorists are turning to Rio Grande cracked. But isn't this a special gasoline that Rio Grande makes for police cars? No, it is a special process, the patented Sinclair cracking process, but it is not a special gasoline for police cars only. You can buy the very same gasoline, Rio Grande Crack with tetraethyl, at any Rio Grande independent service station. It costs no more, and it will give you the same flashing police car performance that police cars have. It is now our pleasure to present Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. Tonight you will hear a true case that may sound unbelievable because of the criminal's extreme youth. Yet the average age of the criminal gangster runs from 14 to 25. The boy whose case we are dramatizing tonight had learned all of the tricks of the trade and developed a few of his own before he was 15 years old. His is a record that is listed in the habitual criminal classification. The records in the Los Angeles Police Department alone of Pete Galitzen prove him to be an incorrigible type. One who has no place in society, who belongs just where he is today, in the state penitentiary. Whether Pete was born with a criminal quirk, or whether his constant association with an older man with a prison background was responsible is hard to say. But no matter what made him do it, it is a fact that this boy, barely in his teens at the start of his crime career, was one of the meanest, hardest criminals ever to pass through our hands. Our story opens on a clear June day in 1925. In a vacant lot bordering the railroad yards, 13-year-old Pete Galitzen listens wide-eyed to his constant friend and advisor, old Jake Herkovitz, as he spins a yarn. You should have seen them bulls' faces when they found out we'd walked out on them. Me and Al could hardly keep from busting right out laughing. What'd you do then, Jake? Well, we waited till the law got through snooping around, and then we walked back into the joint and finished the job. You mean the same night? Sure. Me and Al wasn't afraid of any cop that walked on the beach. I'm going to have a gang someday, Jake. I'm not going to carry a gun, neither. I'm going to be smarter than the cops. That's the idea, kid. Got it all figured out how I'm going to work. That's right. Don't go off half cocked and get messed up the first job. Figure the angles. And then, do it. Couldn't you old enough to have a mob right now, Jake? Fourteen next month. Fourteen, huh? Well, Pete, you got a good brain for a kid. All you got to do is learn the tricks and you'll be a big shot someday. Well, what do 
Will you help me learn the tricks, Jake? Sure, sure. I'll do more than that. I'll help you plan your job. Will you, Jake? Say, that's swell. How can I go wrong with a guy like you helping me? Boy, I can just see the other kids when they find out I'm working with you. They'll all want to be in on it. They can be, too. Only I'm going to tell them what to do, and they're going to do it, or else... That's the spirit, kid. Play smart. There's nothing that can stop you. Thus, the prelude to 14-year-old Peter Galitzin's crime symphony. On his birthday, Pete and a few picked pals celebrate by making a round of the stores. Lifting a ring here, a spotlight for his Ford there. And that night in the garage behind his father's home, Pete lays his plans for the future on the table. Forms his first embryonic crime organization. Bill, you and Alex sit here beside me. Okay, Pete, yeah. You're going to be my lieutenants. And the rest of you, what Bill and Alex says goes. Understand? All right, all right. I've been looking a couple of places over around town here, and they're easy pickings. All we got to do is get in. That's the toughest part of the job. What's so tough about that, Pete? Why not just bust a window and walk in? Because we ain't working that way. And the first one of you I catch busting windows is going to get in trouble with me. Don't get sore, Pete. I was only suggesting. All right, Bill. Just don't get out of line. I'm running this bunch, and I'll make the suggestion. Sure, Pete. I know that. And don't forget it. Here's what we're going to do. Bill and Alex and I will go out and case these joints tomorrow. As soon as it gets late enough, we'll meet the rest of you here and go knock them over. I can't make it tomorrow night, Pete. Me old lady's on the warpath about me being out now. Then you better go home to your old lady and tie yourself to her apron strings before you get lost. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it ain't that, Pete. It ain't that. Only if I cross her, she'll tell the old man and he'll get rough with me. Sure, sure. I understand. And I'm telling you to get out of here and make it fast. I don't want no punks on this outfit. Well, gee, Pete, can I just... You heard me. Get out and stay out. If you want to stay healthy, you'd better not show your face around me. Okay, Pete, don't get sore. I'll... And here's something else for the rest of you to remember. You see this little bump on my forehead? Well, when it gets red, get out of the way. That means trouble. Gee, Pete, it's kind of red now. Sure it is, and I'm sore. Now, you better all clear out before I get any worse. Hey, Bill, Bill. Yeah, Pete? You and Alex stay here. All right. Let's all those punks. You mean you ain't going to let them go with us? Sure. The three of us is enough. We don't need anyone else. Just get in the way. Okay, Pete. Now you're talking. Yeah. And tomorrow I'll be doing more than talking. Tomorrow we're starting out and we ain't going to stop till we get enough dough to move on somewhere else. I'm going to be a big shot. And you guys can go with me. If you don't make any mistakes. Okay, Pete. We won't make any mistakes. I'll see about that later. Now let's make plans. <laughs> Bill and Alex sit around a small table, make plans for the morrow. And the following night at a little after 11 o'clock, they stand in a small alleyway running behind an auto rental sales room. How are we going to get in, Pete? Easy. There's a little window in the washroom that opens out on this alley. Yeah. When I was in there this afternoon, I unhooked it. Pretty smart, Pete. Sure. Ain't that what I told you? You've got to be smart in this racket. Are we all going in through the window? No. You stay out here and keep watch. Me and Alex will go in. If anything goes haywire, let us know. Yeah, but why do I get to rap and stay outside? Why does Alex get to break? Now listen, Bill, you stay here because I told you to, see? See, I, I see, Pete, sure. All right. Come on, Alex. Give me a boost up to the window, and then I'll pull you up. Okay, Pete. And don't make no noise. Don't worry, I won't. I... Now hold it, Alex. Hold it, Mike. Play get this window. Okay. <clears throat> I got it. Now. Here. Now, give me your hand, then I'll pull you up. Here you are. All right, easy, easy now. Get your legs through, and I'll help you down. Yeah, I got it. There. Yeah. Here we are now. Give me the tools. Yeah, here you are. Why, yes, you want to bring every bull in town here? Sorry, Pete. Okay, forget it. Come on and help me with this Jimmy. Crack this thing like it was a baby bank. There. Yeah, that's got it. Now. Gee, look at the dough. This is a nuts, ain't it? Save the talking when we get out of here. Sorry, Pete. Okay, let's blow. Four times that night, the three and. The three safe crackers sneak into auto shops. Four times, a safe door snaps open under the expert jimmying of Pete Galitzin. 
And as Monday morning comes, four different store proprietors get a shock as they gaze at their broken safes. One after the other phones a frantic plea to the police department. And in the office of the bomb and explosive detail, Lieutenant Katzenberger scans the early morning reports, ponders their meaning. Four different places, all out of sales rooms, and each job done the same way. Hey, Eddie. Yes, Kurt. Come here a minute. I got a puzzle to work on. What's it now? Take a look at these reports from last night, Eddie. Recognize the technique? Hmm. Nope. Can't say that I do. Neither do I. It's got me wondering. I thought I knew every safe gang in this town, but this is a new one. And it works plenty fast. Four jobs last night. Nice going. I've checked all four places for fingerprints, and there aren't any. Whoever's pulling this is smart. All we've got to go on is a few busted safes. <laughs> That's a great start. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We'll get all the boys and bring in every mug in this town that I know has a safe-cracking record. Even if none of them did it, well, they might know who we want. Anyway, it's better than sitting here waiting for more reports to come in. Come on. <laughs> Lieutenant Katzenberger's dragnet brings no results. And after talking to more than 20 known criminals, he finds he has learned absolutely nothing. Nowhere can he find even the slightest lead as to the unknown bandit's identity. The following morning, three more jobs are reported. And the next night, five more. In each case, the method is the same. And in each case, there is no clue. Then, as suddenly as they began, the mysterious safe robberies end. Two nights go by with no reports. A week, two weeks, and still no jobs. Lieutenant Katzenberger and Slaughter breathe easier. Hope that whoever has been doing them has left town. Then, one month later, as Lieutenant Katzenberger is looking over a stack of police bulletins, his eyes fall on a report that looks familiar. Calling Lieutenant Slaughter, he tells him of his suspicions. Look, Eddie. Here's a bulletin from the Washington police about three kids they picked up on suspicion of robbery. They let them go for lack of evidence. Yeah. They were driving a hopped-up Ford Roadster with racing wheels. So? So, here's another bulletin from Stockton. Looks like the same kids driving the same car. Suspicion of robbery, released for lack of evidence. Say, you're right, Kent. And this morning I got this one from Fresno. Take a look. Three boys driving stripped Ford Roadster. Arrested here yesterday, released today. Thought to be headed for Los Angeles. Say, this looks hot. You know, I was thinking maybe we'd better pick these boys up and see what they know about our safe-cracking jobs. That Ford ought to be easy to spot on the road. You want me to send a bulletin out? Right. Arrest and hold for question. Sign my name to it. Okay, Katz, I'll get on it right away. Instantly, word flashes out over the police teletype system to all points. Wanted, three boys driving Ford Roadster, racing wheels. If seen, arrest to notify Los Angeles police, Katzenberger. And late that afternoon on the state highway leading into Los Angeles, a cruising police car spots the Ford, arrests the three youthful occupants, brings them to Lieutenant Katzenberger. All right, boys, sit down. I want to talk to you. Now, what's the idea of the coppers dragging us around? We ain't done nothing. You sure of that? Sure, I'm sure. Well, I am not. In fact, I've got a pretty good idea that you and your pals have been pulling quite a few little jobs around town lately. We ain't been in L.A. For how long? Over a month. Uh, that's just what I thought. Ah, uh, what do you mean? It's been just a little over a month since the last job was pulled here in Los Angeles. But there have been plenty of safes cracked up and down the line since then. Listen, you fat boy, you can't pull any of that stuff on me. I ain't done nothing, and you can't hold us here, see? That's a good bluff, Pete, but it won't work. How'd you know my name was Pete? I just remembered you. You used to hang around a lot with old Jake Herkowitz, didn't you? That's where you learned the business so well, from Jake. Ah, you're nuts. Well, maybe I am. But I remember you all right. You see, I used to browse out and watch old Jake every once in a while. Still do, for that matter, or just keep an eye on him. I remember seeing you with him lots of times. Yes, and you other kids, too. Isn't that right? So what? Suppose I did know Jake. That ain't no crime. No, not by itself, but busting safes is. A pretty serious one. Now, come on, Pete. Stop wasting my time. Let's have it. Or do I have to put the pressure on your pals? No. Shut up. You'd better spill, Pete. If your pals tell the story, they'll probably say a lot of things that you won't like. Yeah. 
You won't get out of here healthy. Oh, you're a tough punk, eh? I ain't no punk, but I am tough. Plenty tough. All right, I'm glad to know it. Well, we'll put you away where you can't hurt anybody. While I talk to your pals. Sergeant. Yes, sir? Put this lad somewhere to cool off and uh, watch out for him, Sarge. He's a tough one. I know how to take care of that kind, Lieutenant. Come on, Sonny. All right, all right. Wait a minute. Send this flat foot away and I'll talk. You can't keep me in the can anyway. All right, Sergeant. I'll take charge. Yes, sir. Now, you and your pals cracked those safes in the auto rental joints here in Los Angeles, didn't you? Yeah. How'd you guess it? I didn't guess it. You just told me. Now, will you sign a statement to that effect? A lot of good it would do me to say no. Sure, I'll sign it. But I won't stay in no jails. No? (laughs) I heard a lot of other fellas say that. Tons, too. And as I remember, they're all in jail right now. All right, all right. Let's get the jaw over with. I don't enjoy talking to cops. Give me that statement. Let's get it over with. Self-styled tough one, Pete Galitzin, admits participation in the safe robberies, signs a full confession, and as a result receives a sentence at the Ione Reformatory. In custody of a transportation officer, he and his cronies start the trip to Ione in a police car. And as it stops in traffic for a signal... So long, copper! Hey, hey, hey! Stop! Stop! Come back! No, you shout, Mr. Pete, the fastest runner in town! Pete disappears in the heavy traffic. And the bewildered officer, after losing valuable moments handcuffing the other two boys to the car, sends a hurried phone call to headquarters, reporting the escape. And late that night, in front of Pete's home, Lieutenant Katzenberger and Slaughter stand in the shadows, watch the street in front. I may be wrong, Eddie, but if I know that kid, he'll come home. He's just smart enough to figure that we wouldn't look here for him. It's a funny way to figure things, but maybe you're right. Hey, here comes the car. Keep down. Stopping in front, kid. Yeah. Watch it. Thanks, Leo. I'm a senior. Speed, all right. He's walking right towards us. Let's go. All right. Aye, you're all right, Pete. Don't try anything. You'll get hurt. Let's go. 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 let us go I'll show you what we do to really tough customers. And this time, Pete is taken to Ione under special guard in solitary confinement until he calms down. After 14 months, Pete and his cronies are released. A week goes by, and then one morning in Lieutenant Katzenberger's office. Well, Eddie, our friend Pete and his gang have started again. What? Yep. Three joints last night. Same old method. They only got out of my own last week, didn't they? That's right. And they're underway already. I guess we'll have to pick them up again. But finding Pete proved to be a harder job this time. And after several days spent in staking out at his house, Katzenberger decides the gang has left town again. Acting upon this hunch, police circulars are sent to every town in the United States with a full description of the three boys and an order to arrest on suspicion of robbery. But months go by and nowhere it comes. Pete Gallison seems to have disappeared from the face of the earth. Then, January 5th, 1928, a teletype message clicks over the network of police wires. To Katzenberger, Los Angeles Police. Rio Circular wanted for robbery. Have Pete Galitzin and Lee Young in custody here. Advise us what steps to take. Reeves, Norland's Police Department. To Reeves, New Orleans Police. I'm securing expedition papers on Pete Galitzin. Please hold until notified. Katzenberger, Los Angeles Police. Katzenberger, Los Angeles Police. Please advise as to disposition of Pete Galitzin. We cannot hold him without charge. Reeves, Norland's Police. Reeves, New Orleans Police. Our hands tied. Cannot uh, secure necessary extradition papers because Galitzin is a juvenile. Thanks for cooperation anyway. Katzenberger, Los Angeles Police. (laughs) 
Thus, through a small technical matter of age, Pete Gallitzin is released by the New Orleans police to continue his crime career. And he does. From New Orleans to Detroit, Detroit to Chicago, he leaves a trail of broken safes. Then, from Chicago, he starts a path back toward Los Angeles. In every city along the way, he cracks safes, laughs at the law. And at last, six months after his New Orleans arrest, Pete hits his old stamping grounds again, Los Angeles, where he wastes no time securing a new partner, Leo. And a few days later, he and Leo sweep through the business section of Los Angeles, cleaning seven safes in one night. Then, to celebrate, they decide to take in a dance hall at Venice for a night's relaxation. Boy, this is nuts, Pete. Get a load of some of them dames over there by the orchestra. Yeah, come on. Let's get a couple and show them what dancing's all about. How's this, baby? Like to dance with me? You said it, kid. You sure got rhythm for such a baby. Listen, don't call me no baby. Okay, don't get sore about it. I was only talking. Yeah. Let's stop talking and dance. Maybe afterwards I'll take you out and show you a good time, huh? Okay, kid. That sounds swell for me. Wait a minute. I got a better idea. Let's go over to one of those booths and sit down. It's dark over there. I don't like lights. Sure, why not? Hmm, I think I'm going to like you. That's the idea. Come on, I'll tell you a few things that'll surprise you. I'll show you how much of a baby I am. When you hear what I'm going to tell you... Yeah, didn't expect to see me here, did you, Pete? Katzenberger. Sure, and Ace Slaughter and Harold Collings, too. Sort of a reception committee. All right, beat it, sister. Say, what is this? Who's this guy anyway, Pete? Yeah, beat it like the man says, beautiful. I'll see you some other time. Well, I like that. Great guy you turned out to be, leaving me flat for a couple of cigar shoes. Ah, nuts. So back to Los Angeles goes Pete in company with the now familiar Lieutenant Katzenberger and his partners. And once again he is sentenced to serve a term in the reform school. But on the way from the courtroom to the jail... So they gave you the work, say, Pete. And you thought you were pretty smart. Sure, and I still do. They can't keep me in a reform school. That's what you think. You'll be there for a long time. And that's what you think. Hold on. Hey, 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 stop that boy. Somebody stop that boy. Well, why don't you shoot at him? Yeah, it's like a tent. Anything coming in the crowd gets out of the way. Once again, Pete Gillespie slips his cuffs and makes a seemingly impossible escape. Leaves a bewildered and irate officer standing in the halls of the crowded building. And in less than a week, on the pike at Long Beach on Sunday afternoon... Busting in a joint right in front of all this mob? Eh, not a chance in the world. This place is locked tight on Sunday. Nobody will be expecting a robbery. All we do is walk in the back way and help ourselves. Come on. Here's the place. Give me a hand with this back door. Yeah, okay, Pete. Jake made it for me a long time ago. Oh, Jake sure knew his stuff. Yeah. Now, come on. Safe's in the front room. You mean the room we went by on the pike? Sure. But anybody that looks in can spot us there. So what? We're cleaning the joint. Here, take this rag, and when we get in there, look as though you're dusting. I'll bust the safe. Boy, you ain't afraid of nothing, are you, Pete? Nothing. Come on. Gee, look at all them people out there through the window. Yeah. I wonder what they'd think if they knew we was robbing the place. <laughs> Suckers. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of nervous, Pete. Let, let's make it snappy and get out of here. Okay, Leo. Keep looking as though you're dusting and stand between me and the window. I'll snap this thing open in a second. Yeah, okay. A couple of twists with this. And it's open. All right, Leo. Let's go. You got everything? Everything. Now we beat it back to your house and take it easy until things blow over. Come on. And once at Leo's house, the two youthful safe crackers take it easy. Read the paper accounts of their daylight robbery, laugh to themselves. Days go by and turn into weeks, and Pete begins to grow restless. The urge to crack four safes grows stronger all the time. And at last, one afternoon, while he watches Leo practicing weightlifting, he suggests a plan. What'd you think of taking a trip back east with me, Leo? For what? We got lots of dough. And I want to stick around here lifting weights till the Olympic tryouts. Watch this. Two hundred and fifty pounds up over the head. You don't want to waste your time being a weightlifter. 
can make as much dough in a week back east as you'll make if you win the Olympics. Yeah, but I kind of like to take a crack at that title. I've been practicing every day out here. I'm getting pretty good at it, yeah, too. I hear you talk. You'd think it was a sissy or something. Why don't you buy some nursery rhymes to read at night? Ah, oh, quit kidding me, Pete. I'm not turning softy. I just like to pretend I'm a champion weightlifter and that all the people are talking about me. All right, Pete. Stay right where you are. You too, Leo. Uh, what you come from? That's for you this time. Uh. I just blew in. One of your good friends told me I'd find you here. Dirty and the boys and I dropped around. Thought you'd be happy to see us. Now, get this straight, Pete. You might have a way of busting out of handcuffs and making a getaway, but I'm taking you to Long Beach with Leo, and I'm not standing any foolishness. I'm sick of playing games with you. It wouldn't make me mad to have to bring you down with a 38 police slug for resisting an officer. Now, are you coming quietly? Sure, but you won't be along all the time, and I'll bust down of any two-by-four jail you put me in. What do you think of that? Eh, I've learned from past experience not to laugh at it, Pete. All I say is, don't try it with me. Now, come on. And amazingly enough, Pete Galitzin remained quiet throughout the long trial for the Long Beach robbery. He was sentenced to San Quentin for that, and on the trip north, despite extra guards, despite added vigilance, he made a final bid for freedom and escaped from a car taking him to the station. But his freedom was short-lived. For a week later in Colorado, Denver officials arrested him on a robbery charge and sent him to Canyon City Penitentiary for four years. At the end of that time, having turned 21, he was extradited and delivered to Los Angeles authorities to stand trial for a felony escape. For this, he received a sentence of from 1 to 14 years in San Quentin, where he is today. An added touch to this youthful safe cracker's career is furnished by the realization that in 1948, after he has served his present time in San Quentin, he will face a felony charge in at least ten different cities between here and Chicago. In order to serve the minimum sentence on each of these, Pete Galitzin, the 14-year-old gang leader, will have to live to be well over 100 years of age before he will have gained his freedom. Thank you, Chief Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have enjoyed this program, I ask you to remember just one thing. Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline is more widely used wherever it is sold in police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment than any other brand. It is the only gasoline you can buy that is refined by the patented Sinclair cracking process. It gives you all four qualities police cars must have and all wide-awake motorists want. Quick starting, fast acceleration, surging power, and more miles per gallon. Los Angeles, Oakland, Berkeley, Fresno, Santa Barbara, San Diego, Orange County, San Diego County, Maricopa, the largest county in Arizona, and many, many other cities and counties in this territory have specified Rio Grande cracked gasoline exclusively month after month because in protecting life and property, it gives their emergency fleets police car performance. See your Rio Grande independent dealer tomorrow and fill your tank with Rio Grande cracked gasoline. And when you need new motor oil, he can give you two of the finest on the market. Sinclair, Pennsylvania, which is made from the highest price crude in America but costs you no more than ordinary Pennsylvania oils. Or Sinclair Opaline, the thoroughly de-waxed, de-jellied, longer-lasting lubricant. Sinclair eyes for safety. Cut down repair bills and save money. The next Calling All Cars story to be heard over the station has been printed and illustrated in Calling All Cars news as the red necktie mystery. Get your copy from your Rio Grande independent dealer. It's free. It also tells you all about Rio Grande police money, which you can exchange for junior detective and G-man outfits to make some boy or girl happy. Police badges, pistols, handcuffs, fingerprint outfits, more than a dozen gifts in all, and all free. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company. <laughs> <laughs>